Hello everyone, I'm your TA Yuri and today I'm going to do the paper review. This is the first study on the sample size calculation for the experiment comparison. This paper is on trying to estimate uh, sample sizes for doing uh, comparis experimental comparisons of multiple algorithms automatically. So why did I find this paper interesting? Why did I think about bringing this to you so you can take a look on it? This exp uh, the experimental section is, uh, is clear and well separated. We have a subsection for the problem description, another one for the questions, another one for the parameters, and finally for the results. It's very clear how we are going to move, the transactions are smooth and clear. Another important interesting thing that I found in this paper is that the text in the figures is complete. They not only describe the figure, like this is figure A and shows this, but they also give some interpretation about the figure. What does this figure tell us about the experiments? Also, they do a follow-up experiment. They did that first experiment, they found some interesting and unexpected results, they did a second one. This is very nice. So let's move to the paper and take a look on what I found was interesting about this. Okay, so starting at the abstract, um, the most important part, uh, most important thing about the abstract is that they show a summary of the experiment talking about the main important things you need to know about the experiment. What is this? This is in the yellow part here. This is a study case investigating 21 variants of an algorithm on a class of problems to illustrate the application of the method they are proposing in the paper. So, direct to the case, simple, and what is important? Why, uh, what is they are doing? Investigate the effect. What problem? Scheduling problem. What method? Simulate annealing for illustrate the application. Very nice. So let's move to the section five where they show in the application, the application example. Okay. So here in yellow, I'm using colors so that I highlight different things. In, in this yellow part here, I'm showing that they started the description with the problem. So the problem is this unrelated parallel machine scheduling problem with sequence dependent setup times. If you want more information, they showed references. They give a small description of what this problem is. They have a number of jobs that need to be processed by a number of machines, and they want to minimize the completion time of the last job to leave the system. So they, uh, they want to start to process everything and minimize the amount of time overall. These, they move on to a new sentence where they say, okay, this is scheduling problem, also present other specificities. And this is not relevant because in this case, they want to just apply a problem, um, an algorithm to the problem. So if you want more information, go to the literature. So this is nice, okay? So the focus of the paper is not on the problem, so don't, they don't waste too much time talking about it. A paragraph describing what is important for your paper, for, for this paper, is enough. Okay, on the green part here. So here they show the method they are using and why this method is good for this problem. Again, it's important that we know about the problem, about the method, but this is not what we are doing uh, interested in this paper. We are not proposing an algorithm and not trying to explain it, so one paragraph explaining the main important parts is enough. So why? This is uh, this um, algorithm is important because it's the best one, as they know. It's called the simulated annealing proposed by Santos et al. So if you want more information, you already know where to get it. This uh, algorithm was tested on, on some benchmarks, the benchmarks uh, proposed by Vala, uh, Valada and Ruiz, and they have some like this, this is composed of 220 instances and some machines. For each pair, eight instances with different characteristics are presented. So we have a lot of things to do. And then um, Santos et al. worked on this part, uh, trying to find the best minimum completion time using simulation. 
Okay, nice. Now we know the, what the problem is, what the algorithm they're going to use is. So let's move on to what they are going to talk about. So because so what they did was in the blue section here, they show the gap in the previous analysis of the algorithm. So the authors, Santos et al., when they were looking about the simulating annealing, they did not provide a discussion related to how much each of these perturbations here affect the performance of the algorithm. So there is a gap. We don't know how much they affect. That said, in the literature, people said that these six neighborhoods, uh, they, people suggest that these neighborhood structures have considerably different effects on the algorithm. And the most important one is the task move. The, the one that has more influence on the performance. So why I find this important? Because they, they show the gap, they show, they introduce the variance, those six, they say they're going to attack those six, they're going to analyze those six variants. It's interesting how they connect to what is known. Okay, so we have the algorithm, the algorithm is good. We have this, this variance, we don't know much, but maybe they are important. And they complete, they, they wrap up everything, showing uh, here where the analysis is important because they're filling the gap. And how they're going to do it? They're going to do it by verifying if the features do have an effect. Very smooth um, sequential of ideas. So when we move to section 5.2, uh, 5 the experimental questions, here in yellow, we can see that they show the design of the experiment. It's nice to see that they correlate this paragraph with the last one, the blue part. So to, fur uh, to further investigate the effect of different neighborhoods of the performance of the algorithm, ah, but, and yeah, the six neighborhood structures we saw before. So to first investigate them, they design an experiment in which the algorithm, the full algorithm with everything, was compared against variant, variants with perturbation functions suppressed from the movement. So we have the full algorithm with six and the others are going to have five, four or something like that. And then they, so this is nice because they show the design of the experiment. This is what we are going to do. They give more details about what they are going to do in specifics. For example, they are going to remove at most two perturbations. We have 21 variants. Six with one single perturbation removed and 15 without two perturbations. And okay, so moving on to the second yellow part. Here they tell us what is that they are going to investigate in details. We kind of already know, but they make it clear that's super great. We want to investigate the effects of removing these neighborhood functions from the full algorithm and all versus one design because they want us to check if how each of these variants without one neighborhood performs in comparison to the full algorithm. So variant one against the full algorithm, variant two with the full against the full algorithm, variation three against the full algorithm and everything goes on and on. So this is very nice, very well done. We have a clear and nice design. We know what they are going to do. This is so important that I even highlighted here with, underline, with a red underline. And I want you to remember this when you do your report. Make something like that. Make your design clear and easy for us to read and understand. So we, we see this is so well done that it's a such good straightforward design that we can even try to think, okay, maybe they are using the t-test, okay, because they are doing all versus one and because of the old explanation they give. They don't say that, but we can even assume that they are going to use the t-test. Okay, so moving on to section 5.3. Here they show the parameters for the analysis test. For example, the power, the signal level alpha of 0.05. It's nice that we can see that things we learn in class are useful and they are important. They should be in most papers. So don't forget to add to your work, be it your paper or your report for this class. 
This will for sure improve the quality of your work. Of course, you need to think what is important for your report, for your paper. Do I need to talk about some another parameter? Um, maybe a different uh, significance level, maybe not 0 0.05, but 0 0.01, or I don't know. Of course, some things that are going to be here, maybe they're not important for your case, so don't use them. It's maybe some things that, were important, that are important for your paper are not here, because they, this was not important for this paper I'm showing you. So you need to think exactly what you want to show and talk about. But everything that's important should be in the text. So moving on to section 5.4 in the green part here. So when we are talking about results, the first important thing that you should do is show where the results are. And they are in figure 3. Not only that, they say, OK, figure 3 shows the standard errors obtained for non logarithm pairs, as well as the total si sample size generated for each distance used in this experiment. They move on then to talk about some comments related to this result. Before that, let's take a look at figure 3. Here in blue, in blue, we can see that the figure presents itself. Okay, I'm going, this figure is about standard errors estimations in performance indicator value between the full algorithm on the variance for each test, instance, instance tested. What is more interesting also is that they give a small comment of what is important about this figure. So we can have a, uh, we can find a story behind it, and we don't have to read the text. This is good because if you first take a look on the paper, maybe you move on and find this figure, you find it interesting. You can get an idea of, of what it is about without reading the text. Two months from now, three months from now, when we try to read the paper again, we can just go to the figure ah, and things come back. Also, sometimes in the paper, figures and text are very spread apart. So moving on and forward can be quite complicated, so they help us with that. Okay, take a look on the pink uh, highlighted text here. This is where they show where the code is for reproducibility. This is good because replication of results is the base of a good experimentation. If possible, it's very good to have data available, scripts available, algorithms available, data sets available in the same place, so, uh, so people can replicate and redo your experiments. Do not forget about that. Okay, so moving on to the green part here. Here they follow the same pattern we already saw, introducing where the results are. In this case, they are in figure 4. It's Good that they repeat the same pattern. We are used to it, so we kind of know now how things are going to be like. And actually, it was very formative. It was very complete. You know, you could see the where the figures are. We, we then know that there is going to be some comments about the the results of the figure. And if you imagine, if you go to Figure Four, you are going to find what what does the figure does shows, and then a a small um, summary of the results here. Very nice, very good. Then we move to the second green highlighted area here, where they talk about the statistical analysis. They remind us, as you see, that they are doing a pairwise comparison, and they remind us of their significance level alpha of 0 0.05. Again, because they're introducing a new set of results, they show where the results are, in figure 5. Let's go there. Same pattern as before. Figure, what this figure is about, a comment. In this figure they are showing, for example, the confidence intervals of 95%, and it was good that they reminded us of, us of the alpha. The alpha is 5, it makes sense that the confidence interval is 95, and it's very close to, to the section where they talk about this figure. So we don't have to be moving on throughout the paper trying to find how, what, what, what the value of alpha again. They also show the mean of paired percent differences of the 21 comparisons against the full um, away from the full simulated allele. So the confidence intervals are here for each one of the pairs, and the mean are, is shown here or here and here. Very nice, very good. This all helps the reader get the message, you know? 
but we don't have to worry too much about remember or trying to see if they did it right. The information is here, we just have to absorb it. So moving on to the third green highlighted area here. This is where there is talk about the final results about this experiment. And they showed, they are going to talk about, focus a lot now on ex unexpected results. So the last part is the smaller part. The, the, and the t-test here, as we can see, is the test that they used for this experiment. If you remember, we, this is what we thought before, you know, because their design was so clear and, and well done, we assumed they were going to use the t-test or some similar test, and yeah, we are right. I don't recommend that you put this um, information about using the t-test only in the results section, because this is about results, not about what your experiment is going to be like. They should be in the design section. But anyhow, it's nice that they're talking about the t-test, again, paired percent differences in performance. And in the footnote here, you can see that they are giving the reason why they can use the t-test. Um, they say that the sampling distribution of means is sufficiently close to normality, so using the test is okay. Don't forget to do that in your report, but in a more detailed manner, showing the graphical, showing some um, information, but not just claiming it is normal and then using the test, you know, give the explanation why. Okay, so now I'm going to move to this pink highlighted area here, and this is about the unexpected results that they found. They have unexpected results, although they might not be super exciting, they are very important. Generally, this is how we learn about new things. And generally, these new things that are unexpected, they are important. What happened here? They analyzed the swap, switch, and shift um, variants, and they saw no significant difference in performance among them. So... This maybe suggests that the effects, if they are any, may are too small to be detected. So what they did was, okay, maybe this was a coincidence, maybe just happened because of how we said experiment. But so, so let's further investigate this to see what is happening. Is, is There is no statistical difference indeed, or was just a, something happened because of our, the way we did our experiment. So they moved to the green highlighted area where they introduce this follow-up experiment and this is a very small experiment so with simple comments they want to explore these insights they found in the pink area the objective is to obtain a more precise estimation of the effect of removing these three neighborhoods swap switch and, sh and shift we don't need to be too detailed about here because we are the, this is a follow-up you know the, the, most of the information is the same as before So here I move to the last part of about what I want to talk on this paper, where I'm uh, highlighted in green, pink, and purple. Um, although it's, it's, it's smaller, it's just one paragraph. This follows the same pattern we are seeing throughout the paper. First, they show where the, the results are in table two and figure five. And what do they do? In, in the pink part, they show this, the points, the important points, like the, the mean percent different for the variance. Um, when they tested, they found no statistical difference. So again, no statistically significant difference. And finally, they comment on the, on the purple area. What does the results mean? These results indicate that any effect that these variants may have on the performance are probably very small. Maybe they don't, they don't even exist. So it's very interesting that they summarize everything, but always following the same pattern. So thank you for your attention. I hope this paper was interesting and explanatory to you guys. See you in the next video.